Hello everybody, Luke Schulte. Field Agronomist for Back Tire Boots. If you're like me, we've seen over the last 10 to 15 years in particular how corn yields have really trended up year over year. But can we say the same about soybeans? Now when it comes to these two crops, we typically apply a higher level of management to our corn acres than we do soybeans. Would soybeans respond just as favorably if we applied some of those same principles or similar management to those soybean acres? One of the things we want to look at with NPFR is specific to fertility like nitrogen and sulfur. But if soybeans would respond to nitrogen and sulfur applications, what is the right rate? Or what is the most uh, practical application methods to kind of buck that trend or the narrative that perhaps soybeans aren't growing at the rate in which our corn yields have been? So now let's dive into what we've learned over the last three or four years. So beginning in 2023, we did in fact prove that soybeans are responsive to banded applications of both nitrogen and sulfur. Both of these applications earn the distinction of PFR proven beginning last year, 2023, utilizing Conceal. 10 gallons of 28 on the left and, and two gallons of a thiosol, which consists of both some nitrogen and sulfur. But there's two uh, things that encourage me by this data set. Number one is just the likelihood of payback. A new addition to the 24 of our book is this ROI win percentage. And as you can see, nearly 90% of the time we were profitable with that 10 gallons of UAN or 28%. And three quarters of the time we are profitable with that thiosol application. But the second part of my encouragement here is, I think this is a potential practice that may account for what I see in the field. When I'm doing tissue sampling, by the time we get to mid R5 or even late R5, I've started to notice a trend in tissue samples that our nitrogen levels are starting to fall off at a time that's pretty critical when it comes to grain fill and soybean seed sizing. Could this be a way to account for that nitrogen or, or that volume of nitrogen fixation that's starting to nose off, I think it potentially could. Now keep in mind with this data, it's all utilizing conceal. So in the ground, we recognize most of you probably don't have conceal in your soybean planter, as well as you don't probably wanna make that investment. So one thing we're looking at is, is more nominal investments by making surface applications utilizing these dribble tubes. Here's what it looked like on the London planter there uh, in a 15 inch row spacing with those inside tubes dribbling it behind the closing wheels. So next thing we're going to dive into is what is the right way to apply? We want to answer three questions. What's the right method? What is the right product? And what is the right rate of that product? So this is more of a placement study. And as you can see, in the ground was the most profitable, probably not overly surprising. But what is encouraging is, is what the, the results were of that single dribble application. You might ask, well, why is that dual dribble not as profitable? I think it comes down to the volume of surface area. With a single dribble at 10 gallons of 28%, in all probability, we're maybe losing less versus that dual dribble now having five gallon on both sides of that row and having twice as much surface area exposed to potential volatility. But what is really encouraging is the Ohio results. There were six locations within this data set. Ohio was one of the most profitable. Iowa was not. And I think this helps us to understand where in all probability these type of applications are going are to serve the, the greatest purpose or serve the most benefit. And it's in our lighter soils. Where we conducted these studies in Ohio, we have 1% to 2% organic matter, maybe nearly 3 in some cases. But in Iowa, where it didn't pay higher organic matter or a higher pool of what I call free nutrients, particularly nitrogen and sulfur. You can see by the pictures in front of you, it's undeniable that those, those soybeans on, on the right that had that 28% that application beside the row are fuller, greener, lusher, and it produced the results that you just saw. Now, the second study is looking at a, a product study. What is the right product? Now, in this study, we are utilizing a dual dribble system, even though um, early indications are that may not be the most profitable, but we conducted the study in 23, so we want to keep the same parameters or protocol. So you can see we're utilizing three different products. Two gallons of thiosol on the left, 10 gallons, 28 in the center, and two gallons of a potassium thiosulfate on the right. One thing that probably hurt that middle treatment is this is a dual dribble situation. So again, twice as much surface area exposed versus that single dribble. Keep in mind with this data, it's a, it's a, it's a cumulative effort of both 15s and 30 inch rows. To the east in Ohio specifically, in Indiana, we use predominantly obviously narrow rows. We utilize 15 inch rows in this study. And then to the west, where 30 inches uh, tend to rain prominent, we utilize 30 inch rows within this study as well. And then the last study is trying to answer this question of what is the right rate? Uh, we have two different parameters here, single versus dual dribble, and then different rates of 
here's what the pictures look like as you can see the concentrations versus uh you know one side of the road versus two but here's the data so we're utilizing five 10 and 20 gallon a 28 percent in this study but what is encouraging is an as another component or again continuing that trend of positive re yield results with nitrogen applications banned and beside the row. Regardless of the rate, 5, 10, or 20, and regardless of how we applied it, whether it be one side of the row or both, we saw a positive yield differential as well as a return on investment with that dual dribble, which is kind of contrary to the previous data, data, with 10 gallons on both sides of the row being the most profitable. And as you can see by the picture in front of you, the data is hard to ignore. We conducted the study at actually eight different locations, Ohio included. We had to omit the Ohio data just because as dry as it was at that specific area of the farm and that was a thinner area of the farm, we just felt like the data was too variable to feel confident that it was accurate. But as you can see by the other seven locations, there's a lot of yellow on that chart. Yellow indicates a positive return on investment. Just how profitable by and large these applications of five, 10, 20 gallons of 28% were regardless of how we applied it. So, so in summary, when it comes to higher producing soybeans and bucking that trend that soybeans aren't keeping up with corn, I believe wholeheartedly that to account for that nitrogen uh, drop off that I've seen mid pod fill and mid grain fill, higher yielding soybeans are gonna likely respond to favorably to nitrogen applications. Thiosol and 28% and in the ground are, are PFR proven. When we think about where it's more probable to pay, it's our lower organic matter soils. And then unfortunately, when it comes to the practical side of it, we've definitely seen more consistent results when it comes to those banded applications versus maybe just including um, you know, nitrogen or sulfur in our spring fertilizer broadcast applications. When it comes to adapting to narrow row spacing and, and minimizing that investment, particularly at a time like we are now, I'm encouraged by that single dribble application. We will have to be mindful of uh, minimizing that surface volatility. But the trends that you see throughout these three or four studies are, are very difficult to ignore. Soybeans seem to be favorably responding to those, those banded applications of nitrogen as well as sulfur. So if you liked hearing about these results, this is just one study, uh, please join us. Uh, in the month of January, particularly the first two weeks, we'll host what we call our PFR Insight Meetings. That's where we reveal all the findings of our PFR studies throughout uh, the company, but particularly Ohio from 2024. It won't be a long meeting. It'll only be about 50 to 50 minutes to an hour's worth of content, as well as a meal. We'd love to have you if you have time to join us. With that said, we sure appreciate you tuning in. Have a happy new year.